704, we have several calls of a one car crash with injury. Stay near me. 704. 704 dispatch arrived. Can we rescue and two ambulances? Copy, 704. 704 In 2010, New York State passed the most comprehensive ignition interlock laws in the nation. There were two important events that changed thinking about the problem of drinking and driving. One is the case of Diane Schuler. She was driving the wrong way on the Taconic Parkway on June 26, 2009. Eight people died in that crash, including a number of small children. Later that year, in October, Leandra Rosado, an 11-year-old girl on her way to a pajama party, was a passenger in a vehicle driven by Carmen Huetas. The car crashed and Leandra was ejected from the vehicle and killed. Carmen Huetas was driving drunk. New York State passed a landmark legislation which requires that even first-time DWI offenders, in addition to any other fine, penalty, or sentence of imprisonment, must be sentenced to a period of probation, supervision, or conditional discharge where they are monitored and they must install an ignition interlock device in their motor vehicle. Up to 75% of offenders drive illegally after a DWI arrest. Ignition interlocks give offenders a way to regain legal driving privileges while ensuring they drive alcohol-free. In New York State, there are now two ways in which a driver may be ordered to have an ignition interlock device installed. First is an order from the court for a conviction of DWI. Second is the problem driver restriction. This can happen when there's a history of dangerous repeat drug or alcohol driving convictions and when there are other serious driving offenses or high point driving violations. The A4 restriction is the court-imposed requirement once someone has been convicted of DWI. You will see the restriction code A4, and on the back of the license you will see ignition interlock, which means they are required to have the interlock. A new A2 problem driver restriction was instituted to limit the driving privileges of motorists who may pose a highway risk in light of his or her entire driving history. In those cases, A2 will appear on the front of the license and problem driver will appear on the back. When that person has a history of alcohol-related offenses, DMV will also require the person to install an ignition interlock device as part of the conditions for relicensing. Not all persons with an A2 restriction will be required to have the ignition interlock. Drivers with an A2 are required to carry either the problem driver restriction attachment or the problem driver restriction with interlock attachment. When you run a driver license check on a person required to have a court-imposed interlock, the DMV file will show Restriction Interlock Device. When you encounter a driver with an ignition interlock device, check the driver license. Look for the A2 or A4 restriction. Check the driver license status on your computer or through dispatch. It's important to note that when the court issues an order for installation of an interlock, the restriction might appear in the computer before the deadline for installation. Once the court orders the device, there's a 10-day window for installation, but this is not a 10-day grace period for driving without the interlock. While ignition interlock devices function the same, the appearance and options can differ depending on the manufacturer and model. All devices will have a tube where the operator provides the breath sample. Some of the handsets contain a camera, while others are mounted separately. There will also be a control unit, usually mounted under the dash and out of sight. These are hardwired to the vehicle and designed to deter any tampering or circumvention. Some devices have a modem and GPS technology so that a vehicle can be tracked and for information to flow from the device in real time. We have three classifications of ignition interlock devices. All the devices use fuel cell technology, have reporting capabilities, they can store data, they have programmable retests, you can download the data, and they have anti-tampering and anti-circumvention features. A startup test is the breath test taken by the operator to measure their BAC before starting the vehicle. 
a startup retest is required within 5 to 15 minutes of a failed startup test. A rolling test is administered at random intervals taken by the operator while the vehicle is running. The rolling retest is done while the vehicle is running within three minutes after a failed or missed rolling test. Finally, the set point is the preset BAC setting 0.025% at which the device will prevent the ignition of a motor vehicle from operating. It is important to detect when an ignition interlock device has been circumvented. An offender might tamper with the security tape, screws, wiring, or with the control box, which would be in violation of Section 1198. They might have another person breathe into the device to get the car started or for a rolling restart test. In those situations, both the offender and the person blowing into the device could be charged under 1198. There are devices that people have tried to use to defeat the interlock. Balloons, air compressors, activated charcoal, and similar devices. First of all, to make sure that the human is providing the breath sample and not the machine, some devices use hum tone validation, where the person hums as they blow into the tube. Other technology uses breath pattern recognition, where both the driver blows, draws breath back, and blows again. These devices also sense breath temperature. At that point, now your BAC level is being checked and it's going to tell you, you start the vehicle. right there you may start the vehicle. Once you hear that, you can start the vehicle and go on your way. After the initial startup, the device will require a rolling retest within 5 to 15 minutes of startup. Subsequent rolling retests are required for the duration of travel at random intervals not to exceed 30 minutes. You just pick that device up off the dashboard. You don't have to look at anything. You just provide a five second hum blow test into the device and then you put it back down uh, for the rolling retest. If you provide a sample that the sensor head does not like, it tells you you failed, it's going to ask you to pull the car over and turn it off. If you don't pull the car over and turn it off, it will give you another turn. It, you'll hear it. The, 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 the speaker will say, please pull over and turn off the vehicle. After the third time, if you don't pull over the vehicle, the device is hooked up to the front lights, the rear lights, and the horn, and they're all going to start going off in a sequence. Now, if you're drinking and driving, the last thing you want to do is bring attention to yourself. So at that point, once all the bells and whistles go off, you're going to be asked to pull the car over and turn off the vehicle. At that point, if you don't, we have an emergency 911 system. And what's going to happen is if you don't pull over, the vehicle is going to send an electronic signal to our server. Our server, in turn, is going to send another electronic message to a 911 operator. And it gives the GPS coordinate. It's going to give the BAC level. And it's going to update every 10 seconds. And at that point, the 911 operator can contact the closest patrol car to intercept that vehicle. Many ignition interlock devices appear similar, but there are differences in design. Here's a model that uses hum tone validation. The technology listens for the vibration of a human voice in order to accept the sample. Violations of the interlock requirement are enforceable under Section 1198 of the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law. Subdivision 7A says the interlock requirement pertains to every motor vehicle operated by that person, including leased, rented, or loaned vehicles. Subdivision 7B says, No person shall knowingly rent, lease, or lend a motor vehicle to a person required to have an interlock unless the vehicle is equipped with the device. In that situation, drivers with the interlock requirement are required to notify others of their driving restriction. It's a violation of Subdivision 9A for a driver required to have an interlock to request, solicit, or allow any other person to blow into the device or to start a motor vehicle equipped with the interlock to provide that person with an operable motor vehicle. And the person who blows into an interlock or starts a vehicle equipped with the device to provide an operable motor vehicle to the person required to have the interlock would be in violation of Subdivision 9B. Subdivision 9C says that no person shall tamper with or circumvent an otherwise operable interlock. Finally, Subdivision 9D requires that 
no person subject to a court-ordered interlock shall operate a motor vehicle without the device. A violation of subdivisions 9A, 9B, 9C, or 9D of Section 1198 are a Class A misdemeanor. It's important to note that under Subdivision 8 of Section 1198, a person required to operate a motor vehicle in the course and scope of their employment may operate that vehicle without an ignition interlock device, but only if the employer has been notified about the restriction. The restricted driver is also required to notify the court and probation department with written documentation that their employer has been notified and the employer has granted permission for use of the vehicle without the interlock device for business purposes only. This exemption does not apply in cases where the business is owned or partly owned by a person who is subject to the ignition interlock restriction. You can download a reference sheet from the resource page at nychiefs.org. The ignition interlock device requires a passing breath sample in order to start a car, and it requires periodic retests. If someone fails a retest while the vehicle has already been started, it will not stop the engine, but it will record the failure. Remember, an ignition interlock will never stop a car that's in motion. In New York State, a person driving with an ignition interlock device is required to provide a random retest during travel. A retest is required to ensure that a driver's BAC is not climbing after the initial startup. Or, if the device was circumvented on startup, the retest should then sample the person driving. If a driver fails a rolling retest, the interlock will record that information. Some devices will sound an audible alarm inside of the vehicle. Other devices might flash exterior lights or sound the car horn. If you see or hear those indicators, the driver may have failed a rolling retest. Rolling retests are programmed to require a breath sample within 5 to 15 minutes of the initial startup of the car and at random intervals not to exceed 30 minutes for the duration of travel. Since the law requiring ignition interlocks took effect in 2010, there have been more than 86,000 convictions for DWI requiring the interlock, but less than 24,000 have been installed. Some people don't have cars or they sell them. Some disregard the law. And as you can see, it's important that police officers have a working knowledge about these devices, how they work, and the law relating to them. Real offender accountability comes with the monitoring. Probation departments supervise many of the ignition interlock devices that are court ordered, although they could be monitored by justice agencies such as Stop DWI, Traffic Safety Board, or a drinking driver program. If a police officer stops a motor vehicle with an ignition interlock device installed in it and they have any questions regarding the operator of the motor vehicle, they should call their probation department or the monitoring agency. Research shows that ignition interlocks reduce recidivism among both first-time and repeat DWI offenders, with reductions in subsequent DWI arrests ranging from 50 to 90 percent while the interlock is installed on the vehicle. For people with alcohol addiction, locking them up does not address the problem. Counseling, supervision, and technology, such as the ignition interlock device, is the key. Incarceration is expensive and does not address the root problem of addiction. The ignition interlock device helps us change behaviors.